Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning to you on this Monday morning as we begin another week of our prayer and devotion time together. Thank you each and every one for adapting to our new time over the past week. And of course, you'll notice today a familiar background behind me, and that's because we do not have uh, school on Mondays uh, at WPCA Plexico campus. So we're a, a four day a week uh, school. And so on Mondays, you'll see me in this familiar setting. In the meantime, we'll be working on trying to get the sound issues uh, under control uh, in the conference room where I broadcast from on the other days of the week. But good morning to each of you. Thank you for uh, being a part of this prayer team so faithfully. We do have many things to pray about today. Uh, among them, uh, Sister Judy Williams is having an ultrasound for a low-functioning thyroid today. And so let's keep her in our prayers this morning. Uh, also, Michael Combs will be having double hernia surgery on Friday of this week. So let's keep praying for him. Uh, also, we'll be praying for Connie Coleman, who had a brain aneurysm recently. I have not received any updates on that request, uh, but that's a serious uh, situation as she was found unresponsive in her home. Uh, let's continue to pray for those who are recovering from uh, surgeries they've had recently. Cheryl Chance's family member just had cardiac surgery on Friday and will be having another surgery in the near future. Also continuing to pray for Robin Tibbs as she recovers from surgery that she had on her leg in recent days. Uh, those in the hospital have been praying for uh, Marcia's brother, Dan, uh, Tammy Ryan, I spoke with Jasmine at church yesterday, her daughter, uh, Jasmine, one of our Job Corps students uh, that comes to church very faithfully, and uh, she said that her mom is still has a way to go to recover, but she is still improving. So both her and Dan have been uh, battling sepsis. We need to keep them in our prayers as well as, well as uh, Virgil Pulliam's sister, Laura, who's been in the hospital uh, recently. Uh, those with kidney issues, Olivia needing a transplant, Jesse Ramey, uh, Kristen's friend Dave, Oscar Smith, uh, all with kidney issues. Doug Seaball is in stage four kidney failure. Uh, Cheryl Chance's cousin needs dialysis. Uh, we're praying for Sherry who needs a liver transplant. Barbie Davis who's been in the hospital with liver failure uh, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, we're praying for those with lung issues, including Sally Waller, John Sutter, Venus's brother Clay, Pam Poyum's aunt Nancy Collins, Dee's mother Carolyn, Gary Lee, Kendra Ortiz, and Robbie Northrup. Uh, praying for those with diabetes again this morning, Jimmy Warren, Belinda, Cheryl Lachance, Brother Poyum, Christian Carr, Titus Dornbach, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Tim Workman, Steve Cummins, Anthony Williams, Michael Williams, Emily Stanley, Evie, Rose Brown, Rebecca, JR, Natalie, myself, Lola, uh, Zach Osgood's former co-worker's husband, Holly, and Kristen's cousin, Grady. Uh, those with heart disease or heart issues, Ronnie Wilson, Robin Felver, Holly, Amy, Jenny Perkins' dad, Cheryl Chance, Kelly B., Brother Morris, Joyce Fisk, Sister Patty Arnold, Michelle Strain's mother, Jimmy Warren, and Chaney. Uh, we're praying for healing of MS for Sarah, Marty, Riley, and for Carmen's sister Tracy. Also praying for Tracy's home to sell. We've been praying for that for several months, believing for the answer this morning. Uh, those with stomach issues, Michael Parrott with Crohn's disease. Also praying for Heather Spence, Amber Kay, and Pam Williams' granddaughter, Savannah. Uh, believing for healing of Parkinson's for Russ, Beulah, Kristen's friend Matt, Tim Workman, and my dad. Uh, praying for those with dementia again this morning, those with migraine headaches, those with back problems, uh, specifically Terry Wilmer um, with severe sciatic pain after a recent back surgery, Paul Swinney. Uh, back on the list recently with back problems, Carmen Bolower needing spinal surgery. Also praying for Pam Williams' daughter, Jenny, Marcia's boss, Virginia, 
Carolyn Rogers, Becky Wilson, Rebecca Williams, Britt Moore, Cindy Page, Brianna Williams, Johnny and Terry Nelson, Jennifer Phillips, Tammy Lawson, Elveda Walker, and Belinda's best friend who has both back and shoulder pain. We continue to lift up those with mobility problems. Uh, among them, Chris Ramey, Renee, Sammy, Sheila, and also Donna Robinson, praying for those with arthritis pain again this morning and for those battling cancer. And uh, we unfortunately have another new name to add to that list this morning, Amanda Rogers, uh, a young mother uh, who um, was a part of our church for several years before moving to Kentucky. And um, she has been diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma and also some uh, DCIS precancerous cells in her right breast. So she's seen the oncologist this week and the surgeon this week and does not really know any more details, but we're praying uh, for her today for God, for God to work a miracle in her body. Marcia's cousin's husband, Brian, uh, Robert Fewell, Maxine, Virgil and Julie Nelson, uh, Kathy Selby, Linda Wooten, Pastor Richard Mahan, BJ Scott, Bud Taylor, Jim Ramey, Maggie Lowry, Marcia's co-worker's aunt, Linda Young, Rebecca Peterson, Cheryl, Diane Escher, Heather Milligan, Dennis Phelps, Dwayne Lewis, Claire, Alice, Scott Lucia, Michelle Strain's sister Cindy, Marcia's friend's grandparent, Daniel Dickinson, uh, Ari Bowers, Betty, Valerie, also praying for Jamie Joe's grandfather with lung cancer, Gladys Sims with adenocarcinoma, uh, Jordan, Christine, and Maisie all uh, continuing to battle this disease. Children needing our prayers today, Jaden Short, uh, Tammy Lawson's granddaughter, Darla's granddaughter, all with seizure, uh, epilepsy type symptoms, Abram with GNAL1 disorder, Abel with PKU syndrome and autism, Brantley with heart issues, and Elsie also with heart problems since birth. We're praying for continued recovery this morning for Marcia's friend's brother, Mike, who's been recovering from open heart surgery, Dave Mahan recovering from a motor vehicle accident, uh, Britt and Marcia both still recuperating from uh, issues due to recent surgeries, uh, praying for Buddy Randolph, Billy Huey, uh, Johnny's nephew Joey, Sue Morse's nephew Dwayne, Steve Echeverria, uh, and also Anthony Sifford, all of these recovering from stroke. Uh, Anthony Sifford, of course, uh, has recovered remarkably, and his situation is not at a standstill. It's just in the final stages of recovery, and it has been slow going to get him back to 100%. This is also the case for Pastor Christopher Doom, who a couple of years ago uh, had an intense situation with Guillain-Barre syndrome that almost took his life. Uh, he has been back to work in recent months, back to pastoring uh, his church, able to drive himself to and from work, but uh, due to the long-term effects of Guillain-Barre, it really, um, it really strains him to just get through each and every day. But we do thank God that he's gotten to this point and we're believing for him to also be back to 100%. Brother David Kent is partially paralyzed from an accident in which he fell on icy pavement. And so we continue to lift him up along with my dad who needs continued strengthening and steadiness on his feet uh, after his recent near death experience. And, um, Dad looks a lot better. I was just in church yesterday noticing um, how he gets around and he's just doing so much better, but he really, his main thing is he tries to do too much and uh, ends up falling if someone's not right there to, uh, to grab hold of him when he starts to go down. So uh, he needs to um, have that strength and steadiness, but he is doing very, very well. Steve Cummins' Aunt Sue is on hospice care. I believe I first mentioned this on Friday. Uh, she is expected to pass any day now. So let's keep praying for that situation. Also, Mr. Jennings has been on hospice care for uh, quite some time now. Miss Patterson has just been put on 
hospice with her lone kidney failing. We have other health needs we're praying about for Cheryl Ogden, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Judy Williams' brother, George Tibbs, Devin Huff, Johnny Nelson, Jessica O'Hara, Grace, um, Terry Nelson's sister, Cindy, Carmen's cousin, Meredith, Sue Morris, Carl Metcalf, Eddie Potts, Lois Link, Johnny's cousin, Michael, Venus's brother-in-law, Matthew, Clay, Venus, Randy Reeves, Pat Wells' son, Robbie, Kristen's friend, Ann, and Robin Tibbs. Uh, let's also be praying for our missionaries, both globally and here in North America. Uh, our Missouri North American missions pastors, all doing great works and needing God's strength each and every day, his guidance and his favor in their communities. We're praying for our Metro missionaries, uh, Tim and Rachel Richmond in Detroit, Jerry and Ann West in Washington, D.C., Donnie Willison family in New York City, and Mick and Deborah Cluster going to Philadelphia and currently deputizing, going to be here in Missouri September the 9th through the 22nd. So let's pray for their services to go well while here in our state and as they travel uh, in other uh, districts to raise their budget for the new church in Philadelphia. We're praying for our global missionaries, as I said, especially for those in areas where believers are harshly persecuted. And we do have many nations in our world where this uh, is the case today. Our military personnel and their families uh, need our constant prayer support. And we're praying not only for the soldiers, but for their family members, their spouses, their children, that God would um, strengthen them as they go through long periods of separation I have not, uh, I really didn't see any news last night or this morning, either one, but uh, the last bit of news I saw on Saturday night, um, I know there was a preemptive strike um, by Israel, the IDF on um, uh, Hezbollah in, I guess, in Lebanon, and that situation continues to escalate there between them and Iran's proxies, and so let's continue to uh, believe for peace in Israel and in Ukraine. And you know, we pray for this every day because the Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, we know that ultimately there's not going to be uh, real peace in our world until the Prince of Peace returns. And that's what we uh, so look forward to today is the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who will right all the wrongs and put everything back in perfect order. I'm so excited to know that we will see this prayer come to pass um, at the time of the rapture, but we continue to pray uh, for Jerusalem, which is a cup of trembling to all nations who, who try to touch her and harm her. We need to pray for our nation today, that God will give us strong leadership that is godly leadership um, based on the principles of the Word of God. We need to uh, battle spiritually against the great deception that is um, being being uh, propagated on the American people. And it's really not that hard to see through, but the Bible does talk about how the Satan blinds uh, the hearts and minds of people that they cannot see the truth. I know that's talking about uh, the truth of the Word of God, but um, it applies in this situation as well. Uh, spiritual and family needs we're praying for today. Several families uh, lifting up each and every day, the Joneses, the Perkins, the Cummins, uh, the uh, Marlins, the Moors. Uh, let's keep lifting them up. A special situation in Sister Jennifer Jones' family, uh, not her immediate uh, nuclear family, but her, um, her parents and uh, her side of the family, uh, praying for God to move in that situation. The Marlins, the Moors, as I mentioned, praying for God's will in Josh's life, in his job situation, the Williams, the Pulliams, um, concerned about their granddaughter Alyssa, Debbie Biddick's family, Carmen's nephew Haddon, praying for him, uh, for God's direction and wisdom in his life, praying for Belinda as she has many needs and just starting back, uh, starting a new job, uh, continuing with 
classes, uh, college classes this fall, and also working, um, has a family member causing her problems and urgent financial need. So let's continue to remember her family needs and his personal needs today as well. Uh, Jeffrey needs reconciliation in his family, needs healing for his wife. Stephanie and her children needing restoration in relationships. Annette and Dave, Marsha's friend Ashley and Linda, Johnny and Gracie, all uh, of these needing our continued prayers. Uh, our Mingo RCF residents and Job Corps students uh, praying for them today. Um, got to speak briefly with a few of our uh, residential care uh, people that were in service yesterday and the ones that were there the most faithful among those in that group and uh, I get to go back this week and do uh, bingo, uh, bingo bingo uh, there with the residents uh, I only get to do that now every other week due to my schedule uh, but they're certainly looking forward to that so be in special prayer for those residents and for their encouragement for our job course students we had eight job course students in service yesterday God continues to work in their lives uh, please remember Rose Brown's family in need of salvation pray for all the prodigals today uh, many of these listed here Johnny Nelson's nieces and nephews uh, David Bula Ziegler's granddaughter Judy Johnson's grandson Chaney Becca JR all of these needing to return to the Lord and so many more uh, needing to come back to God and uh, we just had a beautiful service yesterday a uh, great altar response of uh, people praying in the altar that I've never seen uh, pray before. Um, and God is just doing a great work here in Puxico. Keep us in your prayers. Keep our school in your prayers. Uh, not only ours, but uh, our parent campus in Donovan and um, uh, KCA, Kennett Christian Academy. I uh, saw Brother Sharon last night um, and conversed with him a little bit. Uh, about their school and kind of picking people's brains about where we're at in um, in establishing this new school and we want to keep praying for our public schools as well as we have many staff members and students in the public school system right here in Puxico and elsewhere um, Dexter also we have students there and we're just praying that God would continue to move uh, through P7 clubs, uh, campus ministries, uh, through, uh, par uh, through teachers who are believers, that God would use them in a great way. Our nursing home residents need constant prayer cover. Keep praying for them. Don't forget to pray for those who suffer from addictions. And we have unspoken requests today for uh, Brianna Williams, Judy Johnson's family, Johnny's mother, his brother Alan, his niece Jessica, Venus's daughters. Belinda with urgent unspoken needs as well. Let's continue to lift these needs up to the Lord today in prayer. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, now is the time, if you have not done so already, to post that on this um, morning prayer and devotion feed. Uh, you can easily post right here as we're going along, and when we get done, I will make sure and look at each of those requests. Good morning, Ben, Pam, Johnny, Judy, uh, Marsha, Belinda, Kristen, uh, mom and dad with us today. God bless each of you. Carmen is with us this morning. Um, and others signing on here as I saw our numbers just jump from nine to 11. So uh, right here, we've got 12 joining together. Uh, for prayer this morning. Let's look at the word of the Lord. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 and I'm going to be uh, reading down through verse 14. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving anyone if one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do ye and above all these things put on charity or put on love which is the bond of perfectness 
when we are in Christ, the Bible tells us that we have become new creatures. And we need to live like who we are, who God has made us. We cannot live like we once lived before we knew the Lord because we are not those same people anymore. In Colossians 3, as I just read, God gives us here eight characteristics of the new life in Christ. But first, he reminds us of our identity, a new identity that we have. We are God's chosen ones adopted into the family of God by our Heavenly Father. And we're reminded that God uh, chose us and reminded that as he loves us and we are special to him, uh, we are made holy and we are his saints. We are blameless before God because we are in Christ. We are the objects of the Father's tender affection. And with the assurance of that new identity, uh, there is no excuse for us to fail to begin to adopt the traits of our family, uh, our new family, to firmly and decisively live as these new creations, these children of God that we have miraculously become. And so I want to just go over quickly these eight things. And, you know, we talk about the significance of numbers in the Bible, the number of seven being the number of completion. Eight happens to be the number of new beginnings, of a new start. And so I think that it's remarkable that we are given eight characteristics of the new start, the new life in Christ. First of all, we are to live with a compassionate heart. We must care about people, about suffering, about hurts. We must see people as God sees them. And this can be something very difficult, especially for those in ministry, to battle cynicism. And when we are hurt by people and by those that we have tried to help the most, if we're not careful, we'll become callous. But as a new creature, I must have a compassionate heart and truly care about the people that I'm reaching for. I, I felt a moment in our service yesterday as I was preaching. The sermon was, was going well. It was nothing other than the fact I was stumbling over my words here and there. And, and uh, it wasn't a perfect delivery, of course, but, and uh, for that matter, it never is. But, um, but it was going along good. People seemed to be uh, receiving to a degree. But then there was a shift. A chord was struck when when I began to reach for that person who feels like that they've gone too far from God and, and feel unloved, feel like that there's no mercy for them and have believed that lie of the enemy. And as I began to bring the word of God to light on that subject, there was a breaking point uh, in that service uh, where people had fresh hope and I saw people in the altars that I know that that definitely affected them that compassion that they felt the love of Christ coming through the message we must embody that secondly we must put on kindness kindness in our voice our smile our eyes our touch our actions this is a family trait of the family of God we must thirdly take on humility Humble ourselves, focus on Christ and others, not on ourselves. Lie low and exalt Jesus high. And then we must live with meekness, to be gentle, not harsh, not demanding, to be tender with people. Uh, then it tells us to take on patience, choose to be easy to live with, not irritable, not difficult, not quick-tempered. The sixth characteristic is to bear with one another, to be patient with people, not flying off the handle, choosing to let some things go that uh, many others would hold as a grudge. The seventh thing tells us that we must forgive one another, choosing to forgive people who have wronged us and making that choice because God has forgiven us. So likewise, if God let us off the hook, if he dropped the charges against us, so to speak, why would we hold others to account for past wrongs? And then the eighth trait of this new beginning, to put on love. All seven of the previous traits are about love, and love is the bottom line. He said, and above all these, put on love, 
which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I know it's a challenge, but if we walk in the Spirit, we can live this way. This is who we are. We are new creations in Christ Jesus, and we must live this way. Uh, no excuses. We must depend on God's power to obey his word and to live out these eight characteristics of the new Christian life. And uh, we're going to struggle with these things, but we must be committed and dedicated to embody these principles or else we're lying on Jesus and we're not representing who he truly is. Well, that helped me this morning. I hope that it helped you. And uh, we just have about four minutes here, left here to pray. Uh, but I have mentioned uh, most, if not all, of the needs today. So let's just pray a general prayer today and then take these needs upon your heart this morning that God would move in every situation. Lord, we thank you for your word today. God, your word is so quick and so powerful. And I thank you, Lord, for what your word is doing in me right now. Help me, Lord, to uh, receive your engrafted word that's able to save our souls today. Hallelujah, Lord, to keep us from drifting, Lord, to keep us from falling. We pray, God, that you would help us to trust in you uh, more today than ever before. And we need to trust in you because the needs around us are great, and we do not have the answers in ourselves. You are the answer, God, and we praise you and we glorify you as we come before you in unity today. Your word tells us that if we agree, even two of us would agree as touching any one thing, that it shall be done. Your word tells us that if uh, we abide in you and your words abide in us, that we can ask what we will and it shall be done for us. And we believe today that you're doing the work, God. We trust you in your perfect timing and your perfect way, hallelujah, to bring the answers that are needed today. We ask not for just the things that we desire or want, but we ask you to give us godly desires. Give us the desires of our heart that we might pray according to your will. We know that healing is in your will. It's recorded in your word. With your stripes, we are healed. And we believe, God, in your work on our behalf. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your work today on Calvary that you nailed all these things to the cross. So we believe for healing of every kind today, of every sickness, of every disease. We believe for restoration and recovery in the physical sense, as well as the spiritual needs today. Your arm is not shortened. Your ear is not heavy. You hear our prayers today, and you have the power, God, to make the difference. In the name of Jesus, we come against every affliction against every sickness, against every temptation, against every condemnation. We come against it all today and claim victory through your name and through your precious blood and through your word and through your spirit. Lord, you've given us no shortage of tools today and weapons to use in this spiritual warfare. And so today we pull down every stronghold in the name of Jesus, let your will be done in families. Let your will be done today in every home. Hallelujah. In every life that is separated from you. We believe, God, for your love to bridge the gap today. For compassion to make the difference today. For every ministry to flourish. Hallelujah. That's built upon your word. Hallelujah. Use us, God, in this hour, in our generation for your glory. And we will give you the praise for every prodigal, for every unsaved loved one that comes to you. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. It's not of our efforts, but it's of the drawing of your spirit today and of your anointing that chains will be broken and lives will be changed and others will be brought into this wonderful family that you have adopted us into. We give you the thanks for all things. And we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Move in every unspoken need, every special request. Hallelujah. Let your perfect will be done today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a great way to start off the week uh, praying with each of you. I look forward to praying with you tomorrow as I'll be coming to you live from the uh, Learning Center uh, there in the, in the Herman C. Prenzel Education Center. 
Uh, I'll be there tomorrow through the rest of the week. Looking forward at this same time uh, to uh, being a part of prayer ministry with each of you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 745.